Moin. Hi and welcome to Watch and Work. Watch and Work is Contitech's service video series for automotive mechanics. In them you'll learn how to change timing belts on a wide range of vehicle engines. Simply, safely and quickly. The videos show the key working steps for workshop pros. They might take a few minutes, but it's worth staying with them. You'll more than make up this time later on when fitting the belt and any other necessary components. My name is Stefan Meyer, and in each video I'll show you a different vehicle engine. So let's take a look now at today's subject. Today we'll be dealing with Audi. Here we have the 2.8-liter 30-valve ACK engine. For this engine we need our 920 WP3 timing belt kit plus water pump and the tools that we can find in our toolbox V01. So first you need to set the timings in the usual way. For this we start at the special mark on the crankshaft belt pulley. We also need to move the camshafts at the top into a particular position while locking the crankshaft using a dedicated pin. You now have to turn the crankshaft slowly in the direction of engine rotation until the marks align. As you can see the two marks are aligned. You now have to lock the camshafts. To do so, use the special tool, which you fit here at the top. Next, we take the locking pin for the crankshaft from our toolbox V01 and screw it in here. I've now removed the crankshaft belt pulley and guard. Now you need to take another look at the crankshaft belt pulley. You'll see that there is a rubber track on the back. This is a damped belt pulley. Please check for any damage on the rubber track. Next, you have to release the tension on the hydraulic damper. That's to say the timing belt tension has to be released via this hydraulic damper. To do so, we take an 8mm hex wrench, insert it here into the tension pulley and press down hard, but slowly please. We are pressing against the hydraulic force. As you can see, that takes a little time, and then the damper is slowly compressed slightly. Then lock the hydraulic damper using the locking pin from toolbox V01. Guys, take care with the hydraulic damper. It doesn't have any particular change interval specified, though it ought to be changed every time as a matter of course. Many of you tend just to loosen the hydraulic damper's two bolts without compressing it, as shown just now, and then compress it in a vise afterwards. The hydraulic damper must never be compressed in a horizontal position. This can result in air being entrained and cause damage. Now remove the camshaft locking tool and loosen the camshaft sprockets using a counter hold. Why should we use the counter hold? So that we don't damage our locking tool. We have two cams here and they would snap off if we were to use the whole thing as a counter hold. Next you have to remove the two camshaft sprockets. For this we use a special puller to detach the camshafts from the cone. By now it should have been an easy job for you to remove the timing belt. Please also replace the thermostat at the same time. The thermostat can only be removed if the belt has already been removed first. Should the thermostat develop a fault at a later stage, we would have to go through the whole process of a complete timing belt change again. Now you have to change all the components and also thoroughly clean the water pump seal surfaces. When fitting the tensioning pulley, you need to take care. This is an aluminium housing. Please fit the tension pulley without fitting the belt at the same time. What often happens is that people fail to loosen the camshaft sprockets and then face the problem afterwards when fitting the tension pulley that the belt is pressing against it and the whole thing is then misaligned when fitted. I've now fitted all the components and will start to fit the belt here. An important feature to note here is that our camshafts are still loose. I lay the belt around the drive and still have a little play in the drive, which means I still have some room to make corrections. For example, if the teeth on the belt and the sprocket are not meshed when I place the belt over the crankshaft, I can still move my belt a little. The last step is to wrap the belt over the top of the tensioning pulley. 
Now you can see why it was important to loosen the camshaft sprockets at the start. If you don't loosen the camshaft sprockets, you won't manage to fit the belt. By that I mean you'll only get the belt three quarters over the tensioning pulley. Many people then tend to fit the tensioning pulley and the belt at the same time. That can cause a number of problems. First, we could irreparably damage the thread in the aluminium housing, and second, the cam that presses on the lever could be wrongly positioned. If you've fitted the tensioning pulley correctly, the cam on the tensioning pulley sits in this position against the lever, and we have a certain gap at the bottom between the outer ring and the lever. If you fitted the tensioning pulley incorrectly, the cam is the wrong side of the lever and the outer ring of the tensioning pulley is too close to the lever arm. The lever arm is damaged as a result, which in turn leads to the timing belt becoming loose and the engine is then damaged. Guys, take care again here. This isn't a fully automated damper system. In other words, when we pull the pin out, it doesn't mean that everything is immediately correctly set. It's very important, therefore, to reduce the tension on the belt with a torque of 15 Newton meters, so that the correct tension is set here. Before you can turn the engine over twice, please tighten the camshafts again, using the counter hole to ensure the torque can be applied. You've now turned the engine over twice. Before you can complete the engine, you need to check the timings. For this, we use our locking tools as before. Okay, you're almost there. You now just have to complete the engine. Please follow the manufacturer's specifications carefully, especially the torques. Remember, take it gently. Place our change sticker in a clearly visible location in the engine compartment. 